Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus. Oh, how I love Now for all of you that are out there listening. Good, good morning, brothers and sisters. Texting the all five verses actually. After which our brother uh, uh, Conley will come up with our announcements for this morning. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love. For Jesus, who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of flight, who has shown us in this our night. Hallelujah, find the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, find the glory. Revive us again. I'm going to go down another octave. Uh, too high for me. I'm sorry. We, mm. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain. Who has borne all our sins? <coughs> Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace, who has brought us and sought us and guided our way. <coughs> Thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be kindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. I guess I didn't go down, did I? Oh, Brother Mike. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Morning. All right. Announcements. I've got some late announcements. Yesterday was a pickup and drop off of needed communion supplies. And if you want to leave a contribution. Yesterday also, um, the Spanish had a sister's breakfast here from eight to one. That was all yesterday. Um, make a note, family life meeting today after morning service. Also we have, um, our Bible class is a uh, 9.30, it's here, it's, uh, we're doing His Family. It's Sundays at 9.30, Wednesday at 7 o'clock on a Zoom. All right, 
elsewhere outside of Parkway, uh, Central Church of Christ in Stockton is having this Ladies' Day, Strength to Overcome. That'll be uh, October 22nd. And then uh, there's going to be a Women's Center for Seminar, 61st Street and Division Street, Church of Christ. Uh, that's December 3rd, 9 to 12 registrations. All this stuff is inside of our, um, is in our email. So you can get the email, the password for the Zoom class, and also the location of the ladies' seminar. We also have um, Wi-Fi notes. Wow. Uh, we're going to tighten up here a little bit. We're getting a little spread out. Um, other than that, we're glad you're here. Appreciate it. We're, we're trying to grow back to where we were. And we got to do that by reaching out and touching, you know, the members that aren't here. And we have a list on our prayer request, prayer request list, and we have a lot of shut in and sick. But call, you know, this morning we're talking about uh, call somebody, you know, it's somebody you haven't seen in a while. You know, you meant to call them, couldn't call them. Take a minute. All right, that's all I have. Okay, good morning. Okay, I'm before you for the call of worship. I would like to read Psalm 95, verses 3 through 7. And if we just think about what's being said here in the scripture text, we'd appreciate the, the God that we have and the God that we are serving. Beginning with verse 3. The Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed uh, the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture, the flock under his care. So just think about what the scripture text is saying, that we have, you know, God is our God, and we know that from scripture that he created everything. If you go out just in your, your walking around, uh, jogging, I'm just at wondered when you see uh, beautiful butterflies. I took my grandson for a little walk and point out the things that the little creatures that we see. And even he, when we walk along the, the, the drainage path, he stops and look at the little gnats that are crawling around and he pays attention to that, and the, the birds that we see. So when we come back home, I ask him, okay, you tell grandma everything that you, we saw on, on our little walk. And my purpose of taking him on the walk is to burn some of that energy so he come back home <laughs> and, and take a nap. But think, of it, God, we're under his pasture, so he's our great king. And in scripture, the king represents, uh, the, the pasture is his whole kingdom. We're members of his kingdom, and the king is responsible for being the shepherd of his people. God is our shepherd, and we're members of his kingdom. And here it is, he said he would take care of us, and so we're all under his care. And we all have all stories in terms of how God has been great for us, the, the troubles he helped us go through, uh, and the, the, the type of growth that we've, we've had from that, that experience. And we've heard it said before that if we're going to make the heaven, we need to be a prepared people. So heaven is a, a place for a prepared people. So he's going to try us. He wants to grow us up. And we're here to help one another, one another grow. And here we are. We need to come here today to praise God and thank him for uh, the, being, the type of God that he's, he, he, he has been for us and will continue to be for us. Uh, let us pray. Most only divine Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your blessing and blessing us as you do. Thank you for being the God that you are. You, you're a God of patience. You're a God of forgiveness. You're a God of mercy. And thank you, God, for 
being a God of grace, by you sending your son that you want a relationship with us, by having him die upon the cross, that we could be your people, that you could, we could be one of several people that could change the, the world by the, the way that we live. Thank you for caring for us as you do. Thank you for forgiving us as we repent of the things that we've done wrong before you. Help us, Heavenly Father, in this worship this morning that you would clear our minds and open our minds to receive the message and that we could apply the message to, to our lives and, and the things that we, when we have opportunity, that we could share that message that would, when it would have meaning uh, for the person that we might be talking to, the opportunity to, to do so. To bless us in this worship, that our minds be clear, that we worship you in spirit and truth. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, before our Wilford, Brother Wilford uh, comes before us to give us a prayer of thanksgiving, we're going to sing, I sing praises to your name. Amen. Two verses. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name. Father God, for your son, Jesus Christ. We can't thank you enough for him and all that he has done for us. Uh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father God, that was sent because of your son. Just, Father, we, we just thank you for waking us up this morning and just giving us another day. We thank you for the, the food that we have, and we, we just can't thank you enough, pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, brothers and sisters, we're going to focus on Jesus and his sacrifice on our behalf. And before Brother, uh, brother Stephen Webb, comes up to administer a communion. We're going to sing, He loves you so. Why did my Savior come to earth? Oh, 
Corinthians 11th chapter, 23rd verse, 233. With all this technology, every now and then, trying to get it all right, you know. Amen. So it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took of the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do so, and the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. I've read for you 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 23 through 30. So it's time you're to take of, um, I want to make sure that the brothers have not missed anyone. Um, hopefully you have your communion. Does anyone not have their communion? Please raise your hand. We have one over there. Is that the only one? Thank you, brothers. If so, you take up the bread and, and then I will pray for it. Also the cup. Let us pray. Our dearly beloved Father, one is so merciful and all forgiven. Thank you, dearly Father, for giving us the opportunity to have your communion. 
We thank you, Heavenly Father, to continue to bless us, dear Heavenly Father, in the ways that we should be done. Dear Heavenly Father, continue to, for the cup and for the bread. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name, let us all say, Amen. Amen. Now, before our brother Houston, oh, we're going to sing "Home of the Soul." So, I uh, need really, I need help on this one, everybody. So, sing out, please. If for the price we have driven, after all our labor, our own, rest to our souls will be given on the eternal shore. He said, Archie says speech. I was like, wow, I could, I could be up here all day. Um, first, I want to give you a scripture. 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, um, the 12th verse. Um, I know it may take you a while to get there, and you know my speech shouldn't be long. But it reads, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, according to what he does not have. Um, for you that have high school kids, you know that each year we kind of put these things together. I know Chris thought it was a charcuterie little bag to start eating from it at his own home, but it's not. What we do in the high school classes, we make bags that we can give out to the homeless, those people you see, or houseless, you see on the corners, or standing there asking for um, some food. We usually stick a dollar in here. I provide the dollar. Um, but this year we kind of did something different. Is we put a card in there. The front of it says Parkway Church of Christ in our address. But the back of it says, how can we serve you and come see us? So what I wanted to remind you, every week we talk 
a lot about the lights and we talk a lot about uh, the AC or we talk about the heat, that makes us comfortable. There are a lot of people out in the world that are uncomfortable and they don't even know what a light bill is and they don't even know what heat is. And I think each and every time we pass by them on our way here, then we have to remind ourselves as saints is that we have a pantry, we have a kitchen, we have these facilities to be able to serve these people, but they have to know that we are here. So each and every week we, become, we come before you for offering. Um, that money is taken up so that we can provide those services for those in need. Those in our immediate audience, those who are saints and those who are outside who are wanting to know what this message is and how do they get it. So each and every week that somebody comes up before you, just remind yourself that you may pass a lot of people on the way here and you may not have a bag, um, you may not have anything to give them, but take the time maybe to put together a bag, put together a gift, put together something that you can pass out to them that allows them to know who you are and where they can find help when needed. Shall we pray? In a manner that is pleasing and that is acceptable to you, Lord, we just come thanking you for the blessings that you've showered down upon us. You've given us homes, you've given us cars, but most importantly, you've given us jobs so that we can take those means and those monies to be able to pay for those things, but to give back, give back to those who strive to do what's right, but sometimes fall on hard times. Lord, we come at this time, thank you so much for this place that allows us to be a beacon in this community. You've placed us here for a reason, Lord. So now let us take this reason and let us put it forth, not only in word, but in ways and in deeds. We love you, Lord. We need you um, to show us and continually to show us by putting those things before us to help us practice what we say and who we say we are as Christians. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. comes up before us we're going to sing Jesus is coming soon haven't seen this in a long time so let's sing out trouble sometimes all here filling men's hearts with fair freedom we all hold dear now is at stake humbling your hearts to God saved from the chastening rock seek the way pilgrims try Christians away my Jesus is coming, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise righteously in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Love of so many coasts, losing their home of gold. This in God's word is told, evils abound. When things have come to pass, nearing this end at last, it will come very fast. Sound. My Jesus is. Morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise righteously in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be your happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Home with we then will fly, glory to share. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise righteously in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward bound.
My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise righteously in the sky, going where no one died, heavenward bound. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Happy, happy Sunday, everybody. How you guys doing? You guys look beautiful. Look beautiful. You sound well. We're going to have a good time this morning. Uh, men, you guys can hand out the handout. There's a handout each of you should have. And uh, we have a couple of announcements. We're going to honor the anniversaries, and then we'll pray, and we'll go into the lesson. Uh, let me see. Wilford back. Are you ready to hand them out? Uh, go get them from my man, Ernest. <laughs> yes, get you done. The announcement. First of all, um, Parkway is going to have our annual Thanksgiving feast. Uh, we haven't had one in three years, so uh, the elders and the sisters have gathered together. One sister gave me the idea. She nudged me and gave me the idea about uh, let's do it again, and I mentioned it to the elders, and we said yes, and then uh, so the date is November 13th, about a month, about a month and a week, and it, it takes a lot to pull it off, so there's going to be sign-up sheets and um, sign up and help, and we're going to eat back there, and that's a big deal because for three years we've had COVID, and we haven't eaten together. And so uh, Thanksgiving, you have something to do on Thanksgiving, so come for that. It's one of our biggest things we do. So that's November 13th, right after service. Second one is Family Life is meeting right after service today. Uh, we're going to have a meal, and then we're going to come back into this room. And every month I get up here and say, you all are invited to the Family Life meeting. And some come, some don't. But I'm, I'm going to word it differently this time. For those who want a sense of connection, for those who want to connect, this is one of the purposes of family life. We don't meet just to meet. <laughs> we meet, um, it's an emphasis on marriages, if it, it's, it's an emphasis on parenting. So, so if you're 40 years old, 42 years old and under, and you're married, or you have children, uh, this is a group for you. There's no doubt about it. Marriage, parenting, singles. We do a lot for singles. We want to know what does it look like to be single in Christ and to give God glory. And so uh, we cover those bases. But, uh, uh, but the bigger one, I mean, all three of those are big, 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 big. But it's, it's the connection. Uh, these last three years, it's been crazy. It's been crazy in regards to connection. And God be praised that we're still up and running and we're thriving. We're not barely making it because lots has happened in the last three years. And so now we're getting back to connecting and doing God's will. So if that interests you in any way, we'll be here at, we'll be here, we will eat, and we will come back here. And I, myself personally, it's a few more I'm really looking for new ideas, new suggestions, new ideas. And um, let me talk straight, straightforwardly. Those of you who come in now, you are welcome, and we're going to be fresh and new ideas. But uh, 15, 20 years ago, we've already done this. <laughs> the Winters, the Houstons, I can say names. Uh, we've already done this because, Nedra, you remember, Patricia, you remember, uh, our kids were young. Marriages were strong, parenting was strong, single parenting. So, so us older folks, us seasoned folks, ready to do it again, but we're, we, we want a fresh new group of people who want to take advantage of it. Okay, I haven't even got to my lesson yet. And sometimes I don't even want to talk about marriage. Derek? 
But when I don't talk, no, I'm not picking on Derek. <laughs> Derek, my buddy. <laughs> Al, <I'll try> <laughs> Sam. <laughs> but, but when we decide to not talk about marriage, Glenn, when we decide not to talk about marriage for six months or a year, then we get to hear about a few marriages in our own congregation that's not working. So we have to keep talking about it. Okay, so <laughs> come to the family life meeting today at 1.30. I'm not twisting your hand. I'm trying to keep it real, trying to tell you, if you're married, your marriage is important to God. If you have kids, your parenting is important to God. And from where I sit, you can't afford not to address them. Okay? <laughs> All right, so with that, with that, we have every month, we have people that we honor marriages. Christopher and Couture Samuels, they've been married for 12 years. If, if Couture is not here, Couture, are you here? If Couture is not here, take those to her parents, Glenn and Marcia back there. 12 years, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> I need to slow down for a minute. These next two are going to um, um, knock your socks off. You really have to hear these. Sam and Patricia King. Sam and Patricia King, they have been married. Take that to Brother Sam. Uh, yeah, brother. They have been married 47 years. <laughs> Look at them. There you go. Back there. There you go. See, we need to hear that. We need to hear that somebody's in their first or second year of marriage and, and, and shaking their head and saying, are we going to make it? <laughs> are we going to make it? And then you hear, hey, hey, if you think like that, at least go see Sam and Pat back there and say, how did you do it? And if you thought 47 years was something, uh, I, Sam, I'm going to take these to the people myself, okay? All right, all right. We have Henry and Mary Robinson over there. Darren coming to get them. Okay, I, I'll let you take them. They've been married 56 years. Give them a round of applause, everybody. Wow. Don't we need to see that and hear that? Amen? As long as Parkway is a strong marriage congregation, we're going to be all right. You need marriages. So, so those three examples was just, <laughs> thank you, Sam, Pat. Thank you, Henry, Mary. Thank you, Couture, and Chris. Let's pray, and uh, let's get into the lesson. Father in heaven, I thank you for the first day of the week. Thank you for Sunday. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for a clear mind. Thank you for a clear mind to be able to understand your word. Work through me. Use me in whatever way you see fit to exhort, put out your word, your truth, and may we receive it at whatever station we are in life and receive it and enjoy it and make appropriate changes and not be tricked or trapped. Amen. Okay, open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes. Open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes and forgive me, uh, I need to come up here and just say, Q <laughs> did a phenomenal job three weeks ago on kingdom. I still think about his words and lessons over and over again. And then Chris came behind him and spoke on eagles and then heaven. So, uh, so, so we're getting the word from here. We're getting the word from here. And so we, we just want to make sure we're making application. We don't want to just get in the habit of just hearing the word every week and saying rah, 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 but we really need to go home and have it change our lives. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1 through 18. We're not going to read all of that right now. Um, I went out for a minute. Um, Sam, did someone read Ecclesiastes 1, 12 through 18? No, okay, okay. Okay then, okay, so let's read that. Thank you. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 12 through 18. 
I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. Ecclesiastes can be a hard book to read and it can come across very dismal because uh, Solomon says vanity, vanity, vanity. In fact, verse 2 is, is, is the scripture text of Ecclesiastes. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Okay. So let's start. Who has a journal or a diary or a letter from a lost loved one? Who has a letter from their father? Who has a letter from their mother or grandparents or a lost spouse? Who, who, who has a letter of a lost loved one? How valuable is that letter to you? And how often do you read it? This is what this book is about. It's one man's journal or diary through life. He gave us his cliff notes. Solomon is looking for joy, satisfaction, and contentment apart from God. And he writes us his cliff notes. He left us his notes on how he felt and how a life lived at this level consists of. He takes us behind the scenes. Uh, let's give us, uh, 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 let's introduce Solomon to us and let's uh, look at his credentials. Let's go to 1 Kings 4. Turn over to 1 Kings 4. <laughs> 1 Kings 4, we're going to start with verse 20. Let's, let, let's introduce Solomon and his credentials. Kayleen, we had, uh, Deborah and I were blessed, and Isaiah, somewhere in between their third, fourth child, he turned, he turned 21, and so um, like any birthday, we had a spread, at least we thought we had a spread, until I read this, but anyway, we had a spread, <laughs> we had barbecue, we had chicken, we had yams, we had macaroni and cheese, and we had greens, and Deborah had tea, and then Deborah made cakes. She, she made a cake for each child. Isn't that a good, isn't that a good mother? She made a cake for each child, and, the, and we bowled. Nedra, we bowled, and then this morning I woke up, and, and I can't take my hand and put my belt on behind me, and my knees are hurting. But I had fun bowling, but I said, man, what's happening here? Daddy just went bowling. Yeah, but, but we had a spread, and we ate, and this food left over and everything. And so that's what you do. Chris Brinkley gets up here and says, um, love is creative, and it's extravagant. When you love, you're creative, you do things, and you're extravagant. You're not cheap, you know. And so uh, I say all that to say, um, let's introduce us to Solomon. And my Bible says, Sam, these are Solomon's daily provisions. <laughs> this is what he ate daily, John. Let's look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 20. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They ate... They drank, and they were happy. And Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the river of the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. These countries brought tribute. 
and were Solomon's subject all of his life. Don't miss that word tribute. Deborah and I got a chance to see a good movie, The Woman King. I really recommend it if you love movies. And part of the movie is kings paying tribute to one another. And so in the movie, uh, a stronger king, a stronger king has guns and has horses. And so the, the, the lower king didn't want to pay tribute. In fact, they're arguing and fighting with his people about it. But he said, they have guns, they have horses, so-and-so. And so the bigger king comes in, the bigger king comes in and says, what is this tribute? You are short, and so now you owe me that. That's one part of the movie. It's this tribute. So all these kings are coming paying tribute to Solomon. That's a good place to be in. You just sit back and you receive your tribute. Okay? And so um, verse 22. Sol okay, here it is. Solomon's daily provisions. Is that what it says? It don't say monthly, see, so it doesn't say daily. Solomon's daily provisions were 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of meal, 10 head of, stall, of stuffed cattle, stall, uh, uh, um, stall fed cattle, 20 of pasture fed cattle, and 100 sheep and goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roebucks, and choice fowl. For he ruled over all the kingdoms, rest of the river, from Tishpah to Gaza, and, and had peace on all sides. During Solomon's lifetime, Judah and Israel, from, from Dan to Beersheba, uh, lived in safety, each man under his own vine and fig tree. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for chariot horses and 12,000 all who came to the king's table. They saw to it that nothing was lacking. They also brought to the proper place uh, their quotas of barley and straw for the chariot horses and other horses. This is, this is Solomon's daily provision every day. Tomorrow he gets up, Mary, and it's the same thing. Daily. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I, I'm presenting his credentials so when he start talking, we can listen to him, okay? So, so, so now let's look at his wisdom. Uh, verse 29. God gave Solomon wisdom and very good insight. We're going we're gonna to tap into that this morning. And a breath of understanding as measurable as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the men of the east and greater than all the wisdom of, the, of, of, of Egypt. He was wiser than any other man, including Ethan, the Ezrite, wiser than He-Man, Calcol, Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. He described plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the walls. He also taught about animals and birds, reptiles, and fish. Men of all nations came to listen to Solomon's wisdom sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. And I like that part. Men of all nations came to hear, who had heard of his wisdom, came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. What a vita. <laughs> what a resume. <laughs> What's some credentials? And a side note. A thousand dollar question. Who, whom do you seek out for wisdom? Who's your go-to person? Who do you go to 
that you consider wise and you go to them? Or are you doing life all by yourself? Okay, we read Solomon's credentials. So we go back, we go back to our paper. A great time, a great time of great riches and peace. A little extra note, Sam. <laughs> what Solomon built in 40 years, Kayleen, Rehoboam lost in 30 days or so. In, in um, Ecclesiastes, it says, what good is the wise man or the fool? What good is the rich man or the poor man? They all go to the grave. It's meaningless. It's meaningless because who knows what you've worked so hard for and leave behind? Is the person going to be a fool or a wise man? Let me talk to somebody this morning. You guys are older. I'm not talking to a 20-year-old and under group. Who knows about family leaving inheritance? <laughs> and how did that go? <laughs> Sam probably, I mean, Steve probably can tell us a thousand stories, Okay. I mean, a, a, a family may work hard for 40, 50 years, build it all up, and it can be left to a foolish son or daughter. Verse 2, um, you're going to hear vanity, vanity, breath, vanity, no purpose, meaningless, what, what, Solomon is saying, when you sum it all up, when you sum it all up, none of it has any real, eternal, lasting value. Vanity, vanity, vanity. Solomon says he's a king in verse 1. He said he did great projects, chapter 2, verse 4 through 6. He had much wealth, chapter 2, verse 8. He said he had a harem. He had a harem. He had lots of women. Women, women, men singers, women singers. And these words were written 30 centuries ago, and they're still relevant today. So anybody who has doubt about the Bible or its credibility, these words were written 30 centuries ago, and they still apply today. All of these ideas trying to, trying to explain life without reference to God. Solomon says they amount to nothing at the end. Some, some of these ideas of philosophy, Stanley, make it clear, go slow. Some of these ideas of philosophies that we have to deal with are um, here they are. I, 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 did, I didn't even give you the big word, materialism and um, self-centeredness. And I didn't even give you that. I just, I just put the word out. First one, we do that. Or your families and friends do that. Search for significance. Personal autonomy. The church has a challenge of getting people to connect. You don't realize one philosophy is personal autonomy. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I decide what I'm going to be involved in, when and at what level. It's a philosophy. Don't get too close to me. It's a philosophy. My search for significance my search for personal autonomy, another philosophy. People are trying to find meaning and purpose to life. Solomon tried this apart from God. It really comes out in the 50s 
and the 60s and the 70s because when you're 20, when you're 20, Gamin, Gamin, you're strong. <laughs> Sam, you know where I'm going? You're young. <laughs> you're good looking. <laughs> you, you, you're arrogant. Can't no one tell you something. But then just let 30 years go by. Oh, somebody don't hear me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Kayleen, just let 30 years go by. And that philosophy you had that was so good at 20, what does it look like at 50? What you ran after, apart from God, what you ran after. So personal autonomy. So um, a, 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 a family, uh, be kind and be nice to the elders because you're saying, why can't we connect why can't we bring these people in? You're dealing with a personal philosophy of autonomy, and I'm not getting too close to any community church stuff. Somebody say amen. I'll say amen anyhow. You got to know what's happening. It's not just a, it's not just a, um, um, the elders can't bring him in or the preacher's not preaching strong enough. So, so you're dealing with philosophies. You're dealing with kingdom. You, you, you're dealing with personal autonomy where I'm about myself and I'm not going to be part of a community. I want to be saved, but I don't want to do any work. Right, what is our purpose? Money, money is its own set. Oh, I got to tell you a story. Daryl, um, I got up Tuesday, my car wouldn't start, so I need to get it towed. I, 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 we have Triple A, we have State Farm. I call State Farm. No problem, Mr. Winters, we got you. We're, we'll tow you, you even get a $30 lift. And so, okay, I'm gonna get it towed. They say, you only, through State Farm, you, you only get to tow it for 12 miles. The, the place it was going to, the mechanic, was, was 13 miles. I said, no problem, no problem, no problem. $5.25. We do all the stuff. Get the address on stuff. I get a text. I get a text. <laughs> Steve, you got to hear this one. <laughs> the text said, the text said, nothing is starting until you pay the $5.25. <laughs> I put out my debit card. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my phone. I'm getting everything. So I need to tow. I'm trying to get to work. But we, we, we gladly paid the $5.25. And then I was able to get a tow. Money is big. Money is big. People want their money. People will fight you on their money. People fall out of relationships on money. And so what do you do with someone who has it all? Watch your career. Have your career do your best you can but you can't bank on your career because another pharaoh can come who knew not Joseph. <laughs> it could change that quickly. Another pharaoh come on, it's happened to me at Kaiser. I told you guys I kept a good attitude and that pharaoh left and another one's in, but the pharaoh on our ship came in, disrupted everybody's schedule and Kaiser praised her and sent her and, and, gave, and gave her a promotion. Came in, disrupted everybody, and then I'm gone. <laughs> but my whole faith is not on my career. I love what I do, but, but, but who I am as a person and my significance is not based on what I am and what I do. Right. Success. How, how did you go after success? And then love. Love. All these, all, the, all, these are, all these are philosophies that we go after um, uh, without reference to God. Any worldview, we're going to go there, any worldview that suppresses the truth about God, watch out for. And it is part of the pattern of this world. Let's go to Romans 1, 18 and 19. Romans 1. 
Romans 1, 18 and 19. Romans 1, 18 and 19, the Bible reads, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. My point is... Um, uh, any worldview, philosophy that suppresses the tr tr 8 and 9. Colossians 2, 8 and 9, one of my favorite scriptures. Colossians 2, 8 and 9. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies. Philosophy is a way of doing life, which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. So uh, don't let anybody come to you. Don't let anybody come to you with another way of doing life other than Christ. You already have Christ. You already have the best way you can do life. There is nothing new to offer you. Back to slide five. So um, this is an introduction, an overview. Next week, uh, Lord willing, I plan to talk about chapter two, which is pleasure, and chapter three, which is time what Solomon says about pleasure and what he says about time. But this is an introduction um, this morning. So slide five, it goes, it says, uh, Ecclesiastes 1, 1 verse 1, the verse 12 is the introduction to the journey. I'm about to go on a journey. Um, 1 verse 12 through all the way through chapter 6, verse 9, it's pursuing the journey and 6, Verse 10 through to the end of the chapter, reflections and summary of what it did. In Ecclesiastes a lot, you will hear the term under heaven or under the sun. What that means is, is, is vanity, vanity. All of it means nothing under the sun, under heaven. What it means is on this earth. Whenever you see under, under the sun or uh, under heaven, it's on this earth. Vanity, 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 everything on this earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 3 through 11. Some of this is, some of this is nothing you don't know, but it's just nice to review and nice to really understand it. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. What does man gain from all his labor at which he told? There it is, under the sun. Generations come, um, generations go. There, there's no remembrance of those who've gone before. Um, people who've lost a loved one, one of the biggest things they're concerned about is that their loved one is not forgotten. We try to remember, we try to remember when they pass. We, I'm talking about all of us in here, we do it in our own different ways. We may remember a car, we may remember a phone call. It's precious. It's precious because people don't want you to forget their loved ones. But generations come and generations go. We're not going to be able to hold back somebody from going on to the Lord. Verse 4, generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. 
All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full to the place the streams come from. There they return once again. The cycle of nature, the sun comes up, the sun sets, water goes into the sea, water comes back, yet the sea, the river is never full. He's, he's telling you the cycle of nature, the cycle of generations, um, the cycle of curiosity. Verse 9, uh, oh, verse 8. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is filled of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. There is no remembrance of men of old, and even those who are yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow. Cycle of curiosity, cycle of absence of something new. What it means is it's been here already. We forget it and then remember it, or we figure it out, but it's been here already. The cycle, hits, and, and Solomon is saying, wearisome, wearisome, vanity, vanity. A chasing after the wind under the sun. So we should get, if I preach this right, we should get close to some feeling of despair. Go to my second page and turn it over. All lifestyles are meaningless. All lifestyles, Solomon. Nothing can be changed. Knowledge is useless under the sun. Stanley, I'm about to enroll in a master's degree program. I'm about to enroll in a PhD program. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're about to see what I mean, but, but going after knowledge, to be going after knowledge apart from God is wearisome. Desire for knowledge brings much pain. Can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you feel the anxiety the frustration and discouragement of Solomon. I'm chasing. I'm going after all these things under the sun apart from God. Can anyone else see it besides me? Can you, can you hear the frustration and the anxiety and the frustration? Now, step back a minute. Step back a minute. Look at people under the sun. We're running around. Do you see and hear the frustration? Do you see the anxiety? Do you see the hurt? Running around and trying to answer uh, questions apart from God. Each of us here, we should fill this place up next week. Each of us know one person <coughs> running around trying to find answers to these, to these philosophy in life apart from God. That's where anxiety, frustration, and discouragement come in. You hear, you, you hear why, Solomon? Oh, I love my slide eight. Deborah, Solomon is teaching us. Derek, you ready? <laughs> oh, Sam, you back there? <laughs> if there is nothing new under the sun that has any meaning, then our purpose must be above the sun, outside of ourselves. Woo! <laughs> if there is no Solomon finally gets to the point of, if there's nothing new under the sun, then our purpose, our meaning life, must be above the sun, outside of ourselves, the realm of the invisible, the realm of the spiritual, the godly, the heavenly, joy, peace, contentment, peace with God, peace with yourself. 
Forgiveness, cleansing, and power are not found under the sun. Let's go to Colossians 3, 1 through 5. Woo! Man, that bring me goosebumps. I, I, I jumped when I stayed there. I said, oh, man, this is deep. <laughs> Colossians 3. This is not um, Solomon, but this is Paul. Colossians 3, verse 1 through 5. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I'll just read one more. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You can go ahead and read more. But uh, I, I want to stay with that teaching for a minute. I want, you to, I want this one to sink in. If everything under the sun is vanity, a chasing after the wind, and weariness, then for me to have purpose in life, it has to be above the sun. Woo! Now watch. Thank you, Rodney. Now watch how beautiful the church community becomes. You guys hear me? The church community all of a sudden now becomes, woo, we come to church. We praise God above the sun. We, we, learn, we learn we're not God. We pray. The church community does a whole lot of things above the sun. We tell you, don't focus on this earth. Chris came here, did an excellent job on heaven. Where do you hear that? So I'm slowing down to say, have you come to the elders and say, count me in? Have you come to the deacons? Have you come to their wives? Are you on the team? Can we use you? Can you be of a benefit? Can you add value? Do you know what you are a part of? Above the sun. Things under the sun never fully satisfies. You've experienced it. That good meal Ethan I had last night, that good meal I had last night is not going to, uh, uh, that meal is gone. I need another meal today. <laughs> it doesn't satisfy. It satisfies for a moment. You've all experienced it. You brought the new car. <laughs> you brought the new car. Uh, that car was cool. For that first month, second month, the carpet still smelled new. But by the second, third month, you say, uh, I got payments on this car? <laughs> For how long? <laughs> That's what this is about, that it doesn't ever fully satisfy. It's not supposed to. Solomon is letting us in. Solomon said, I've had it all, and I've done it all, and I'm giving you the cliff notes. I'm telling you. 
<laughs> the search for more answers under the sun will prove meaningless to you apart from God. The whole can't be known without God. Does that knowledge bring me joy, peace, contentment, and soul satisfaction? Chris got up here a week or two ago and said, do you have soul insurance? Solomon concludes with three main observations. Have a trusting relationship with God. Let's go to uh, the second one. The young should remember and serve God while they are young. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I think I want 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember your creator in the days of our youth before the, tr before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you say, I find no pleasure of them. Young people, first of all, my hat's off to you. You're here. You're participating. You're doing things. Keep it up. Um, uh, you, uh, young people, you, you don't want to get in the hat because... All churches are searching for young people, and, and you, you go down to Pepperdine, they're having seminars on how can we keep the youth. Young people, I want to encourage you. You're here. My hat's off to you, so-and-so. But don't think you're doing a God a favor serving him in your youth. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the best way to live. Solomon says, serve God in your youth. The bottom line principle for a, meaning life, for a meaningful life is to fear God and keep his commandments. That, that's um, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or not. The bottom line of the whole thing. I have a few more slides. Slide 10. How, so, how does this play out under the sun? What do you see under the sun? I got up here about a month ago talking about the fall and how earth looks like after the fall. So, how does this play out under the sun? Step back a minute and just see how life looks like under the sun. Everybody who's focused on this earth. I did look at Yahoo, but I said, no, nah, I don't want to, uh, the stuff, I said, I don't want to share that this morning. But, uh, but the one thing, I love this, it said the Bible is on the ballot. <laughs> the Bible on the ballot, and does Rockland's Destiny Church cross the line between church and state? I haven't read it, but uh, this could be, this could be the Bible on the ballot, or it could be God on the ballot. God on the ballot. We're going we're gonna to remove prayer. We're going to re remove Bible reading. We're going we're gonna to remove the Ten Commandments. By the way, we've done that. That's under the sun. Just because under the sun they do things without reference to God. The church, we don't care about that. Q gets up here and says, we bring God wherever we go.
You guys remember when Jesus and Pilate was talking and Pilate said, are you a king? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> I'm not under the sun. I'm from a place you don't even know about. So we don't trip out. We don't get crazy with stuff underneath the sun. Because we know people under the sun are just doing what they do under the sun. Life without reference to God, Psalms 14.1, only a fool has said in their heart, there is no God. Proverbs, that's Psalms 14.1. Anyone who's trying to do life without a reference to God, the Bible calls you a fool. Stanley Winter did not call you a fool. I just quoted Psalms 14.1. Trying to find answers, or all answers, under the sun. How is that working for you? Uh, Sunday is a very defining day regarding where one is in reference to God. Sunday is a very defining day. It's worship. You want to know where one is really in regards to, regards to reference for God? Is God in your life or not? I got to word this pretty carefully because I work on Sunday. Uh, I, I, I've talked, I've heard from about three to five different people in the last six weeks. Some are struggling and mad and sweating and stuff. And, other, and others may have given up their Sunday so quickly. But that's not the worst thing. Um, uh, 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 we're on the internet. We're on Zoom. So you still can listen. But the question is, the question is, uh, 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 how hard, how passionate, how do you fight to keep God in your life? to make sure he's the center and he's the reference point. You guys have heard me say this. This is not your first time hearing me say this. Um, um, one of the things we work against in the church is people believing all they have to do is come here on Sunday and worship, and the, and the rest of the week, it's no involvement. It's no reference to God. That's not going to work. Not when you have everything under the sun fighting, calling for your attention. You want to hold the church leaders responsible on why so-and-so is not spiritual. It don't work like that. God has to be important to you. He has to be your reference. He has to be your center every day. And so when you come here, it's like, voila, we're all getting together and praising the Lord. The, pre the preacher can't do a pep talk or a cheer talk every Sunday. Sooner or later, your battery's going to get dead, and when it's dead, nobody can charge it up. Those who once had a focus above the sun have now returned for answers under the sun. Anybody tried to go get a prodigal lately? Jabari, I have this here. This could be a full-time job. Cecil and Margaret, if they went after all the young people who used to follow after God and now are back under the sun, they're not going to do it, but they would have to quit their jobs. And even if they quit their jobs, it still wouldn't be enough. 
I could have a full-time job and, it's the, and the job still wouldn't get done. Of people who once were following above the sun and they've gone back to life, dealing with life under the sun. What, I, I, I mean, this is like a Sunday morning 9.30 question, Anthony. We know the answer. What is so appealing under the sun? And Solomon tells us, meaningless, meaningless, meaningless. Okay. Uh, we're five minutes from finishing. Okay, so uh, your preacher Stanley heard a song. I mean, I heard the song two or three months ago. It's called 1,000 Names. It's called 1,000 Names of Jesus. I love the song. So I heard the song twice last week, and I said, Wilford, how can I get this song in my lesson? <laughs> it had nothing to do with Ecclesiastes. I said, how can I get this song in my lesson? And Derek, I said, I know how. I can ask one question, <laughs> I can ask one question, and that'll put my song in this lesson. And the question is, the question is, what are some of the names of God above the sun that I do not want to miss? When we become older, we don't like getting cheated. We don't like getting shortchanged. If I'm, if I'm supposed to receive my blessing, I want all my blessing. <laughs> I want all my blessing. And so one of the reasons why um, uh, there are some names of God above the sun that I don't want to miss out on. So that's why I don't want to be hanging out under the sun too long and just being all about that. And so it's a song... Uh, I know it as a song. Uh, I might try to do what I can do at times. I'm not, I'm not going to sing it to you. But my point is, it's a song. Uh, uh, 1,000 names. I forgot the author, but, but you may like to hear it. But here are some names of God. And they're bigger than just a name. Watch. Uh, the song says, uh, I call you creator. I call you maker because you give life and eternal strength. Spark. I call you healer because you can mend any broken heart. See, you don't find this under the sun. <laughs> and when I start talking these names, it's so many people here. God's going to meet you where you need for him to meet you at by these names. And that's why you don't want to be cheated under the sun and miss this I call you faithful father because you finish everything you start. grandfather or whatever it is but uh, uh, the, the, the guy I call you faithful father because you finish everything you start oh that next verse he says, my soul was made to respond. Mary, you know why we meet every Sunday and why we sing for hours and so and so and next week we'll do it again? Because my soul is made to respond. I'm lost in wonder for all you do. Is God wonderful to you? Are you just going through the motions? Have you missed, have you missed the wonder of God? Barbara, you and I can just go back from where he took us from and that we're here now and we should have wonder. And everybody should have the same story. <laughs> Put your hands up if God has touched you and brought you from someplace. There we, that's how it should be. Go on, Derek. <laughs> That's our God. 
The song says, your love is boundless. Your grace is patient. You are never giving up on me. You're not going to find that in some books underneath the sun. Go to the next slide. I got it in there, Wilfer. Is there a next slide? You don't have it? There you go. Oh, <laughs> I'm having a ball, Deborah. <laughs> I call you bondage breaker. You are handing out the prison keys. Who has some addiction? Who's stuck? Who feels like they're going around in a vicious cycle over and over again? God's called the bondage breaker. I'm giving out the prison keys. Is that good news, Anthony? <laughs> Is that good news? You see, that's why I don't want to be cheated. I don't want to just talk about things underneath the sun because they're not going to touch my soul. And they're not going to meet me there. He's the rock of ages. He's the great I am. He's the king forever, the beginning and the end. I call you Lord. You're Yahweh, you're Messiah, revealed in flesh and blood. Okay, give me the next slide. <laughs> He's the second Adam. To lead us home. Who's a wanderer out there? Who needs to find their way home? I call you risen Savior. Oh, I got to stop on this one. Mm. Death defeated. Woo! This is one of our biggest ways, Mary, why we serve our risen Savior. What you going to do when you're on your hospital bed and you might not get up? Uh, what you going to do when you got to call the preacher and say so-and-so has passed, has gone on to glory? You've already been dealing with life above the sun. You know Jesus. You know the one who has already defeated death. That's where he meets you. I call you death defeated. Full of mercy, rich in love, Jesus, Messiah, If there's someone here who is, who everything you've been doing has been about under the sun and you're sick and tired. You don't know Jesus like this. You've been running around under the sun, um, hustling, being slick and all that stuff. And, and, and it's gotten you here. It's, it's gotten you here where um, you say, uh, I kind of know some, but I'm not all in. I don't know Jesus like this. I'm tired of being cheated. I want it all. What do you do? I'm going to go slow today. Because you guys are listening. I'm going to go slow today. <coughs> you hear all those names of Jesus. Those are names for you. Those are names for you to meet you with whatever you need them to meet you at right now. You believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins, and two things will happen. Brother Ethan is here from last week. We'll take you up here and we'll baptize you. There's water here, or, or we'll put the water in. We'll baptize you. Two things happen. You receive forgiveness of sin, cleansing, 
clean heart, clean mind. You feel dirty. You, you, you receive cleansing. And you receive Holy Spirit power. Christians, is it time to have a revival? <laughs> time to get a jump start? I'm, I'm part of an eternal, magnificent church that brought, brought, blood brought by Jesus. I can do no less than what my master, my savior asked of me. One of the beauties of Parkway is you have an elder or elders up here at the end. You can come forward. This is above the sun. Anybody who thinks that's a waste of time, anyone who's in a rush because you got something to do underneath the sun, you might need to rethink that. Amen. Young man got baptized last week. Uh, you guys were wonderful and stand to greet him. Welcome here. The Bible says angels in heaven above the sun uh, rejoice when one soul but if you don't understand that, you just go on and go. You got something, you got something underneath the sun more important than a soul being saved. Last thing I'm gonna say, last thing I'm gonna say, each of us, Stanley included, let's step it up. Let's step it up. All of us know one person who's running around underneath the sun, frustrated, angry, hopeless, and no answers. And here we are sitting up here comfortable with the answers. We need to bring somebody else with us. We have the answers. We have Jesus. We have the answers of going around, what you're going to have to, But the hard part is how to package it where they will receive it. And you got to pray ahead of time. Let's go back to filling this church up. Let's um, please respond as we stand and sing. Things are ready. Come to the feast. Come to the table now is spread. Ye famishing, ye weary, come and thou shalt be richly fed. Hear the invitation come. service we have um, a number of prayer requests I'm going to just share some of them with you um, I'm going to begin with sister sister Lena Sykes Lena you're, I, I, you're would you raise your hand so I can see she's right back there um, she has prayer for her family uh, comfort and a brother Phil Moore is going through a very difficult time I'm going to be praying for sister Lena also, for our own sister Annette, sister Annette Dees, right over here, she acknowledges, she said, I've sinned and asked the church to pray for me, and we're going to be praying that we do our part, that we also forgive our sister. 
Sister Bernice, we want to continue to pray for Sister Bernice Jackson, Steve's mom, who's still recovering from that surgery, from the, from the hip surgery. So let's come, we're going to be praying for Steve's mom. But Conley's going to be traveling, and so we're going to be praying for God's travel grace for them. Sister Vera sends this uh, prayer request for us. Please pray for my sister, Linda Nelson. She is in the hospital in Vallejo, and she is just needing God's complete healing power to get up out of that hospital and come home. So we're going to be praying for Vera's sister. Also, Brother Wilford said, Jekai just has come into the realization that there's another child in the house. He's not the only one. So we're going to be praying for Jekai's growth that God will watch over this uh, young man, that he'll learn that um, he, he's just part of the family. He's not all the family. <laughs> that, that's a big one. And for Wilford and uh, Desiree, they want to be closer to God as well and raise their children. And for good test results, many of us as we get older, we start to go to the doctor and have those tests. We want those test results to be good ones. And so we're going to be praying for Charles. And a prayer request by our own brother Russell, he, his sister, sister, um, his sister's name is Allison. She's been dealing with cancer for some time. And so he's asking prayer on her behalf. She's also struggling with some mental health issues. And we know that that's tough stuff to deal with. But Allison, uh, his sister will be praying for her. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we know you are the one and only true God able to uh, answer all of our prayers. We ask prayer, Heavenly Father, for Sister Annette, who's acknowledged her sin. The onus is on us, Heavenly Father, to also forgive our sister and continue to love on her. Heavenly Father, would you heal Sister Bernice uh, from the surgery that she's gone through, take away all the pain, all the discomfort that she might be experiencing, and bring Sister Bernice back to full health. Heavenly Father, for Mike and Betty, who will be traveling away from us, our prayer is that you will allow them protection and get them to their destination. Let them be uh, wearing the armor of, of God and the image of Christ with them wherever they go, whoever they talk to, but bring them back safe to us. Watch over uh, the children while they're away. Heavenly Father, for Jekai, he's a little guy, Heavenly Father. He hasn't even obeyed your gospel yet, but he is already growing and realizing and understanding that him, he needs to be able to grow and learn to accept. But in this specific case, Heavenly Father, help uh, Desiree and Wilfred teach him how to love his sister love his brothers and sisters around him so he will grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But grant him protection and grace, Heavenly Father, too, so he will be able to do that. We ask that for all of our children, that we teach them and raise them up properly in the Lord. We pray for their family. Um, Desiree is still with the baby, um, but make it possible for her health to improve and the child's health to improve that it will be strong enough to come and be with us. For our sister Teresa, our sister Teresa's husband, Charles, Heavenly Father, um, those tests that he's waiting for, we want those tests to come back, Heavenly Father, with no indication of anything being wrong. Be with Charles in his mind, in his heart. Let him uh, be strong in his faith to you, Heavenly Father. But those tests that scare all of us sometimes. We're asking that you just remove this fear away. Last prayer for Brother Russell's sister, Allison, who's dealing with cancer. We're asking for healing, complete healing, because we know it's in your power, but we're asking for you to also help her in this mental struggle that she's going through. Let her get through it, Heavenly Father. This is your child. Heavenly Father, for all the love and care that you give all those that are in your care, especially those on our prayer list, those who are traveling, those who are shut in, 
those who are desiring to be here but aren't ready just yet, we're praying for them, for our congregation, for all that we do here, because we're trying to grow people up, Heavenly Father. We're trying to grow them up so that when you come for your church, they will be ready. Let us do that in the most wise and understanding way. We ask all things in Jesus' name. Amen. And just for a minute, if you would, I have a special. She just needs three brothers to help move my furniture into my condo. And, and she states, this, I just moved here from Sacramento. I'm 68 years old, a widow. I have a bed, dresser, and she has a two up above it, a chest, another two. That means two items, I believe, two drawers to be moved. And she says, that's it. So, so it isn't like moving a, a whole bunch. So it's like three items, you know, maybe four or six at the most. And so we need to talk to our sister and find out, you know, what arrangements we can make, when, the time, uh, where, when, how, you know, a vehicle to pick up these things and help. We need to talk to her. And Lena, you're right back there. Would you, would you raise your hand so the brothers can, can see you? Okay. See, there she is right there. She's needing to move some things, just a few items. So let's, let's get over there and find out what she needs. Okay. Let's dis we're, we're dismissed. And let's go ahead and fellowship with each other. Now for all of you that are out there listening, I'm glad you told me I need you just to close your eyes. And I need you to think about your personal relationship with the Father right now. How good he's been. And family, let's just give God praise. It's time to worship. Oh, let's go.